So let's uh, start with Christmas. Okay. Let's start with Christmas. Everybody good? Um, uh, Johnny Reed had the best-selling album in Canada uh, a couple years ago. Was it two years ago or three years Christmas ago? Album? His Christmas album? It was his Christmas album. And it, well, no, just album. Oh, oh. This <laughs> is why I'm telling you this. Album. So this yeah. is a good move. This is shrewd, yes. Moscaloo. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shrewd <laughs> move. Um, it, his, it was the best-selling album, I think, of any genre, of any, like, I mean, rock, pop, yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Can- best-selling Canadian album in Canada uh, with his Christmas album. I didn't so. know that, but you can tell that I'm not surprised. Yes. Yeah. Now, Johnny Reed's albums tend to do okay anyway. Yeah, but he's fine. Uh, his, and, and his tours usually sell out. But nobody yeah. sells a whole lot of records, but he had the number one albums uh, uh, in Canada with a Christmas record. So I think it's like people either love or hate Christmas music, and if they love it, they love, love it. Yeah. So this has been, like, so far it's been selling pretty good, even, like, physical copies, which you don't always see. Um, We've only done one Christmas show so far. Um, Well, I guess this year in total, when we're all is said and done, we'll have done two. Yeah. Just to test the waters. But, like, people are excited and buying it. I think it's just something a little bit different. I fall into the uh, category of I like Christmas music for two weeks. Yes, there's a specific. See, and I'm not even (laughs) exaggerating. Mom came over, like, at the beginning of November to help me out with some some housework I was painting my bedroom it was like November 1st or 2nd and I was like what do you want to listen to and she's like is it too early for Christmas music and I was like "Mm, it's just the two of us in the house so no it is not what was it November 2nd yeah and like all day all I'm not even kidding we didn't get sick of it we genuinely like it that much yeah like I like Bing are we talking Bing Crosby anything anything but like my favorite is like growing up mom always had the Kenny and Dolly record like on repeat so well, that's nice. I went to the bank, like the first or second of November, um, and they had Christmas music on, and I was not happy about it. Yeah, I was like, are this you one is of those people early. that's like has to be after, you know, November eleventh or whatever? It, it has nothing to do with my birthday, but my birthday is on December first, yeah. and I was it was always kind of like, okay, we'll get into it after that yeah. because the well, it's and, and it that wasn't that sounds like it's uh, uh, out of self interest. It wasn't it really is. that. It wasn't. It just honestly, I like Christmas so much, yeah. and I like the whole family yeah. thing so much. It's just if it's longer than a month, it it yeah. you can't maintain the excitement for it. It's too yes. long. It gets diluted and watered down a little bit. Yes. And then it becomes the norm, not special. Which is kind of actually part of the reason why I chose to do mostly covers on this album, because people already know them and they have a sense of familiarity instead of, although there is one original on the Christmas album that I wrote years ago called Thank God for Christmas. But um, everything else is cover because you really only have, it seems like, this is not a stat, this is an opinion. I feel like you have two, two and a half weeks of people's full attention with Christmas music. Uh, yes, this so, is exactly right. Yeah. You are right. So that means Let's that... Let's call that fact. Okay, it's a fact. <laughs> so like out of the whole entire year, you've got just that really tiny little sliver of a window. So I didn't want to... I didn't want to make people go through the work, I guess, of kind of like learning a new song that might sound unfamiliar. Plus these songs are kind of just like what I grew up listening to and I feel like it's a good way to to get to know me and my family in a yeah. strange kind of way. So so yeah, I, I kind of I, I get what you're saying with that. And and a lot of people feel that way and I think it's fine. Yeah, it's not bah humbug. It really no. is. It doesn't come from that place. It comes from a place where I don't want it to be like for example, I worked at YTV, the kids network for years and years and years, and it ruined Halloween for me for a little oh, for a little bit. Did because, they do it for way too long? Is that No, 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 because I was dressing up in costumes yeah. every week wearing stuff. So when Halloween came around, people were like, What are you gonna be? I'm like, I'm not dressing up in anything. Anything. I wear stupid I'm costumes being Paul all, not stupid. <laughs> yeah. I, I wear costumes for fun at work yeah. for the kids yeah. all week. So it, it kind of ruined Halloween for yes. me a little bit. I don't want to hear Christmas yeah. music in the bank on November 2nd because it it makes December 17th not yes. a special. Yeah, it's it can be a little exhausting. Maybe it's just the excitement of it is is exhausting, draining. Yeah. We got, I mean, our tree arrived. I have a tree. It's the beginning of December now. Yeah, yeah. tree. Is yeah. your house all de- decorated already? Yeah, it is. It hasn't been for a long time, though. I will yeah. say that. I don't know if that was due to my schedule this year, just being a little bit crazy. I will say I probably will leave it up until tour because, I mean, tour, we start at the end of January. Yeah. But, like, there will be a couple weeks of buffer that I have to leave. So probably, like, second week of January-ish. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. I interviewed, uh, um, I interviewed uh, Wendell Clark. Yeah, uh, from the uh, legendary Toronto Maple Leaf Wendell Clark. Yeah, uh, for a, a show um, last year, and 
it was on Halloween. It was October 31st. Oh, yeah. And I went to his place with a camera crew, and he's like, listen, I have to kind of warn you, my wife really likes Christmas. So October, oh. October 31st, their house was already completely decorated, tree up. Oh, I thought you were going to say Halloween. No, everything. Wow. Tree up on Halloween. The okay. house was already decorated for Christmas. Uh, uh, the, the the staircases wrapped in, yeah. all the lights everywhere and all yeah. of that. And so uh, when I was leaving the house, she was there. I said, uh, Merry Christmas on the way out. It was uh, yeah. Halloween. She laughed. That's cute. And I was just like, that's, I mean, honestly, like, that's a little too much. That, I mean, yeah, I, I kind of agree. But I but I don't, in a sense, because if it makes you happy and like if that time of year right, you always I feel know, happy. I know, I know. Right? You know? But in maybe in public. Like, that's in their own home. So if that, go for it. Maybe but, find yeah. something else. But at the bank, specifically at the bank. Specifically at the yeah. bank. But it, maybe it was also the thing that was like, I'm at the bank, I'm dealing with money. This all feels so commercial and corporate. Yeah, it's yeah. It feels like you're in like a weird spend, scene spend, or spend, commercial. Spend, spend, yes. pre-spending guilt already. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's what it was. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Thank God for Christmas. You wrote that a long time ago? I did, actually, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, how old I would have been or how many years ago. Probably, like, I'm guessing. Probably, like, five or six years ago. Yeah. I probably It's a pretty smart it. title. Thank right? you. Right? A little yeah. word, word play there. Yeah. Obviously. It wasn't meant to be, like, an actual, like, Christian thing or anything yeah. like that. But, I mean, that's, you know traditionally the meaning of Christmas if you believe in that stuff yeah. then you'd, yeah. you'd actually have to thank God for you do. Christmas yeah his kid yeah you're right <laughs> all that stuff yeah. right pretty good and these are just some favorites that you want to do Little Drummer Boy yeah Great Parappa Pum Pum Winter Wonderland yeah Grown Up Christmas List I don't know that one. Oh, I'm so happy that you paused there because this one's an interesting story okay um, that was the first song I ever sang live not the first Christmas song not the first that was the first song I ever sang live on my own Grown Up Christmas List yeah alright I don't, why don't I know it uh, well I think it's in, I think it was originally done by Amy Grant okay um, but I don't know how I stumbled upon it I don't remember but I do know that the version I stumbled upon was a Kelly Clarkson version. Okay. And I just really loved it. And I sang it at what was called the Carol Festival at the St. Joseph's Catholic Church in Langenberg. I was probably like 14. And my band teacher played piano for me and I sang and um, probably was horrible. (laughs) And I was terrified. (laughs) I was so scared. But um, so that's why I really wanted to include that one, because I was like, there's probably a video of me somewhere doing that, that my mom holds probably like so close to her heart. And I was like, how cool to like come for full circle and and just like years between and accomplishments and whether they're personal or or career wise. So I I just thought it was a really cool story. And it's a beautiful song. I can't think of a tougher room to play than your own high school. Oh, you're, there isn't a tougher right? room to play than, yeah. than your own hometown, really, which sounds so wrong. Like yeah. people from my hometown probably hate that I say that because they're like, we're supportive. And of they are. Of course. But that's why it's hard. But a you teenager just... getting up in front of the <sighs> school to sing a song? But you just yeah. like, those are the closest people in your life. Like you don't want to let them down. Yeah. And you you could mess up and they and they wouldn't care. But you, you do. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. It's scary. Uh, Santa Baby with Cassidy Pope. With Cassidy Pope. Yeah, we love Cassidy. We do. Yeah, she's so sweet. We actually have never met in person. More often than not, uh, now when you see a duet, the people were not in the same room. Yeah. And I guess there was something special, super special about it years and years and years ago when you would see the video of the person, of the, the two artists yes. meeting together. But in this digital age, it's just I mean, yeah. not a reality. Money, all of that stuff, right? It, the biggest one, to be honest, is money. Yeah. I would say the second is scheduling and, yep. and time and third being location we don't all live in one central contrary to popular belief not all of us live like in nashville yeah. so a lot of us do some of us don't whatever it's great but um so actually cassidy i was getting i got a facetime call one day randomly in like july maybe and uh it was from Corey crowder who's mm-hmm. my producer so i didn't think much of it I was just gonna say hi but i answered it and it was cassidy and she's like hey i'm about to nice to meet you <laughs> And uh, she was about to go in and record vocals and just wanted to chat and say hi and thank you. And so that was kind of cool. Do you like the way your voices sound together? 
I, I do. Yeah. They're they're very different. Yeah. It was funny actually. Um, Joel Stewart and I did a Christmas special together for radio, and uh, he talked about listening to the album for the first time, and he he literally thought that it was me. And he was like, oh, that's a cool thing that Jess is trying with her voice. And then he read the credits and was like, oh, okay." So obviously it sounds different enough. But um, yeah, he's getting old. His hearing is going. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe that's what it actually is. But uh, yeah, it's cool. She adds a a really fun like flavor and it sounds buddy buddy and exciting. And it's just really fun. And Paul Brandt. Yeah. I know him. <laughs> you know him. You guys have worked together We've, before. Yes, yes. Not not our not our first rodeo. But it's nice that you were able to put him on on your album. The coolest thing about that is that the the song the song that Paul is singing on is called With Bells On mm-hmm. and it's a Kenny and Dolly song. Um so to me that also comes full circle because I grew up my mom and I grew up listening to Kenny and Dolly's Christmas record um, when I was a kid and so that's like one of my favorite songs and we also as a kid grew up listening to Paul Brandt that was a staple in our house and I like he was my favorite male artist of of you know that era and still obviously to this day and um, so to come so full circle that I get to record one of my favorite childhood songs with one of my favorite childhood artists is just the it's still mind blowing, even though he's a friend now. Were you in the room with him? No. God, <laughs> like, what the hell? No, uh, <laughs> no, I was not. I know, so silly. Yeah, we've been no, in it, rooms together millions of times, and it, not it, that it, one. It makes sense these days. It yeah. really does. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of a of a single, like a song that's been on an album. Aside from like my YouTube stuff, where clearly we were in the same room. I don't think I've got Bobby Wills. Um, like I'm trying to think of any of these. Not once were we in the same room on an album. Tim Hicks is a track that he's got on the chart right now with Lindsay yeah. L. They they weren't in the same room. Uh, no. And Paul with Lindsay L. Not in the same room. Yep. No. Probably almost never. All the featured artists uh, were, were BB Rexa and Florida Georgia Line oh, together. Probably not. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way it is. Just ruined the magic. I for know. The people. Well, no, yeah. but this song it, it works. It makes sense. It's fine. And the music industry is tougher than ever. It really is. It's tougher than ever. Yeah. Okay, Sleigh Ride. We know this one. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, you do, right? I think I do. Yeah, I Probably think so. Probably, to hear it. <laughs> yeah. And Mary, Mary, did you know, with Hunter Brothers. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Um, I really wanted to bring in another Saskatchewan artist yeah. of some sort. Uh, and the Hunter Brothers and I talked about it actually while we were at Telemiracle. Uh, they sang on a song of mine called Past the Past. They, we did a specific version for Telemiracle okay. that they did kind of sort of acapella. We'd had a little, JJ played a little piano um, and it was beautiful. And I was like, oh man, just honestly, just kind of like spur of the moment. I was like, I texted um, Mike real quick and I was like, do you think I can ask them to be on my Christmas record? Like we'd already talked about, I wanted a lot of guests on this record just to kind of make it really fun um a family affair yeah and and that's what christmas is about is family and friends so i kind of thought that that makes sense on the record so spur of the moment i was like this is beautiful and i was like do you guys want to sing on my christmas record and uh and they said yes and and we kind of chose the song together and that's one of their favorite songs so that's why mary did you know is on the christmas record it's one of their favorites um and it's hauntingly beautiful what they add to that song i it would not sound anything like that had they not been on it. Uh, and then your track that you wrote, Thank God for Christmas, yeah. uh, and Oh Holy Night with Love Locks. Yeah. Very yeah. Nice. yeah. Well, you, you were there that the day that we recorded that, I actually. I was. Oh, I lied. We were in the room together on that one. Oh, that, you were? Yes. Oh, good. It was um, for the, the at, Live at the Edison. Yeah. We did that. Oh, you did? And we used that exact recording. It's, okay. li- it's the, a live recording. At the From the old CMT show, Live at the Edison. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that's the record. All right, there you go. And the two dates. We did one in Saskatchewan, actually, right. in, in Yorkton. And how did it go? Really well. Yeah. It's scary. Christmas music is challenging. It's it's hard, like especially for the band. The chord progressions are not necessarily natural. They're not things that you use in like our regular structure scheduled. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. So it's challenging. And again, with the two week period, it's not stuff that you listen to every year. So you have a shorter time frame to kind of learn it in a sense. Um, I never thought about that before. Yeah, the songs I didn't are they are 
uh, uh, created in a really different way, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, they're really challenging. But the and they come from all different eras of mm-hmm. mu- uh, uh, times, decades, yeah. whatever. Right? Yeah, ex- yeah, especially on this record, being that they're all covers, I chose some from like you know the eighties or the nineties, and then like who who even knows like the forties? I don't. 20s yeah, even? yeah, I don't yeah. know. Um, so yeah, so the boys really like the boys being my band really rose to the occasion and executed it perfectly and and did a great job and it was really fun it was fun to be able to to just do something a little different we mixed in some obviously the record is not like an hour and a half long of live material um so we mixed in some of my regular original stuff which was really fun yeah we got two standing ovations so that was good i was excited about that and you had a show in toronto i did yeah. It was fun. So two shows <laughs> yeah. uh, this year, maybe a longer Christmas tour sometime down yeah, the road. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. I would love to do that. Kind of wanted to just test the waters this year and see how it goes. What and... was Christmas like when you were growing up? What was it like at home? Was it super um, special? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. My I my family was separated, but it kind of was like the same. Like my mom still came to my dad's side. My parents were still so close and yeah. amazing. Um, so it was busy, but I was fortunate in that all of my family was in the same town or like within the same little vicinity. So we didn't have to travel. Yeah. You much. didn't have to get on an airplane. Or, no. Yeah. So we usually just woke up Christmas morning and, and did our thing just with mom and dad and my brother. And then we'd go to grandma's for brunch, grandma Diane's for brunch. And then usually that night we went to my mom's side and did that and, and then went to bed. We usually opened one Chris, uh, Christmas present on Christmas Eve. Yeah. You do you do, do that, that with your kids? No. All on Christmas day. Yeah. I, th- I think, yeah, we haven't done it with them yet. I think I, I, think I did. We got did to you? open one. When I was a kid, but I don't. I think it should all be on Christmas morning. Yeah, yeah. I don't disagree. I yeah. think we were just really impatient, and my mom didn't want to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you can have one. Just one. Now go to bed. A little one. Now Open those pajamas, <laughs> <laughs> and then go to bed. <laughs> oh, clothes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Thanks for doing this. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Ho ho ho. <laughs>